everybody and how's it going? This is one of your hosts, Sieg Kaiser Geisman, and I'm here together with Carla, Rachel, and Richard. Say hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hey, everybody. Excellent. Now, if you recall correctly, only Richard followed the prompt. Uh, Carla and Rachel, you're going to have to try again. Actually, he later. didn't. He didn't. <laughs> he said, hey, everybody. He didn't say hello, everybody. So technically, uh, we all failed. That's just because failed. I'm a little bit of a rebel, but you guys just don't listen. Yeah, we just nice. full on don't follow instructions at all. I make my own rules. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we are going to be talking about utility. Now, we've read a couple of articles here, and uh, we're going to just kind of casually catch up a little bit and start talking about them. One involves uh, Vitalik Buterin, uh, a funny name for some. And the other one is uh, about Elon Musk, another funny name, as you will. So I I know that this is slightly off topic. We started to talk about something before this podcast, but I did want to tell my short story really quickly, which is um, that there is a program uh, that is called Tornado, and it allows you to move funds around in crypto space. But when I first started in crypto, um, a project that I was watching rugged, and they found out who rugged it, and then they confronted him, and he was like, I can't give the money back. I lost it in tornado. And I literally thought that he was trying to say that like a tornado like hit his house and like took his laptop. And he's like, I don't, I can't give you the, I lost it. A tornado took it. And I'm like, what the, this guy is crazy. Like I'm not buying it. And I did not know that it was a program until like several weeks later. And then I was like, oh, that makes substantially more sense. (laughs) Uh, Tornado, Tornado Cash, I believe. Uh, Roman Semenov, uh, I, I said this a little bit earlier, um, but his Git account got, got blocked. I think um, Tornado Cash got marked as a, I think, specially designated national uh, or something like that. Um, and so, you know, obviously people in the U.S. can't interact with that. Um, but it's kind of a little strange that him as an individual, not necessarily um, associated uh, or, you know, representing the the entity his own personal git account got blocked yeah yeah we saw a few different git accounts get blocked just because hmm. i guess they want them to get out of here yeah i saw an art- another article about four or five different people that had contributed i think all contributors to it are getting removed which is just really silly and interesting i mean it's just it's such a stupid way to move forward with this. I mean, okay, so like you have an asset and you don't you don't want the ability for someone to transfer that asset in a private way. So like, you know, we see them are trying to attack cash at the government levels where they're wanting to investigate people's accounts that have $600 or more um, because they want to track billionaires, quote unquote. And so this is just another attack on, um, you know, people's privacy. And that actually is a good lead-in to um, our first article that we were going to discuss in this podcast. Yeah. Um, and by the way, we're going to be linking all the articles in the description so you guys can also read them just to know what we're kind of talking about. But this is an article from CryptoSlate. It's titled, Vitalik Proposes Private NFT Using Stealth Addresses to Hide Owner's Identity. So for those of you who did read the article, what are your initial thoughts? Well, I think maybe, um, I guess a question that I have is how much groundwork do we want to uh, lay for our listeners? Do we want to define this a little bit better? Um, or are we assuming that there is a baseline of knowledge? Uh, I think we might have to give a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Like who is Vitalik? Vitalik is the Ethereum founder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so this this comes up because of visibility and people wanting to use NFTs as a, either identity or to identify the user that may have NFTs. Um, and I think the funny thing about this article is that if they're talking about ERC-721s just being able to be hidden on Ethereum, um, then I think that they're going to run into the exact same problem that they're running into now. Um, you know, if you have something hidden then as soon as you go to expose it or to use it, um, unless the network is hiding it permanently for you, being transacted to other people, 
then you're going to run into the same type of immediate regulation that can occur. Yeah, I was interested uh, in reading this article. One of the things that I was kind of curious about is this idea of, um, you know, only like the blockchain itself tells a, a story, you know, of, of just like a chain of custody, uh, transaction to transaction. And this was saying in the article that the stealth address would mean that only like the computer and like the person, the sender and the receiver would be able to like verify who each other were to a degree. And I, uh, I guess that I'm, I don't know how exactly that works on the blockchain. Like I, I thought that that's kind of been like a little bit of a fundamental opposition. Mm -hmm. It said, uh, it was supposed to be an extension for, uh, Zeki snarks. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought it was, you know, I also don't necessarily know very much about it. I'm going to read more into it to find out more. I like education around it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a good talking point for us to, to kind of go into is uh, part of the, you know, this this podcast is talking about utility. And I think this actually gives uh, credence to um, solving a problem that is found in the utility of this. Um, something that was brought up is uh, medical and vaccination. And that is, if you have an NFT for, you know, your medical record, right? And I, this is one of the reasons why I got into NFTs is um, the utility specifically around the medical field. That's what I thought was interesting about it. Um, if you have uh, your vaccination record just out in the public, um, that could potentially be dangerous. You know, people could either judge you for it or they know what you're doing um, te technically um, or potentially um, certain entities could um, persecute you or otherwise discriminate against you based on what you do or don't have, whether or not it's legal. Um, of course, discrimination is not legal, but, um, you know, there's always a pretense that could be there, right? And so I think the ability to be able to hide um, as well as, like, not let your medical decisions show um, if we were to implement this system solves one of the, the problems that people oftentimes... Uh, show could potentially happen if we were to do a system like that. Well, and there's there's multiple layers to this too. We have both the concept of you know what we the people want to have happen and what a technology could do, versus what uh, government entities or other um, corporations and uh, yeah. Uh, what's the word? Sure. Oh, <clears throat> institutions. Yeah, other large institutions actually will do. Um, and so even if we make a system that is succinct and perfect in many ways, whether or not they'll actually take advantage of it is, you know, a completely different story. For instance, we have the capability of doing end-to-end -end private communication. But do you think that, like, the government is going to adopt that for phone technology and that they want that? Of course not. They, they want the exact opposite of that. Um, but speaking of, uh, you mentioned ZK snark in this article, they also mention another acronym, um, which I think is kind of funny that they don't go over the P O A P, um, proof of attendance protocol, private. Yeah. Uh, do they actually say that? They don't. Article? I Never. had to they look it up. Always. Yeah. <laughs> so let's define that. And then I can also define, um, ZK snark, which I think is really like a, a funny acronym. Um, most people know this as just zero knowledge or zero knowledge proof. Um, there's ZK snark and there is ZK Stark and there are other zero knowledge uh, concepts coming up. Um, ZK snark specifically mean, or is, you know, stands for zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive argument of knowledge. Um, we could kind of go into like defining what that is or give some real life examples of a zero knowledge proof, but, um, there, we should probably do an article or like a podcast or something that's specifically regarding ZK and what it means and how it works and that kind of thing. But I could give an example of it in a pretty simple way if people. Yeah. Want. I think that'd I be good. It. Yeah. I think a simple example would be great. Sure. So, um, <clears throat> Let's imagine that I've got a picture of like a million people and I know where uh, Waldo is <laughs> in the picture. And I can tell you, hey, in this picture, 
I know where Waldo is. How would I prove that to you without also giving away his location? Hmm. I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but if I were to have devised essentially a wall with a small window in it and had markings where I could put the picture exactly, you wouldn't see where it kind of started or ended or how far away it was from either edge. And you could see that uh, Waldo through the little window, then you would know that I knew, but you also wouldn't know where he was. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, and so zero knowledge proof of something um, is a way to pass on the truth of something without passing on the way to prove it. Um, or not necessarily only the way to prove it, but the way to recreate the entire uh, thing of it so that you wouldn't just kind of give away the whole secret. And this is powerful um, if you wanted to sit down next to someone and say, hey, I'm who I'm supposed to be and them believe you, but also not be able to prove themselves as you to someone else. That was a really good description. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I, uh, I run something back uh, to help my understanding of it? Um, sure. Let's say there is a perfectly shaped key cut out. And to prove that I have the key for it, the right key, they could, uh, they could overlay it and see just the correct key as something like that. Descriptive of it, or did it just go over my head? Um, I think that that's a complicated example <laughs> because showing the key or handing the key or letting someone interact with the key is the scary piece. Um, I could give another example of this. If you had memorized a list of, let's say, a thousand words mm -hmm. and I had memorized the same list um, and you were to ask me maybe six or ten different random numbers in that list and I gave you the appropriate words you would know that I knew the list because you had chosen at random and I gave you the exact answers you were wanting. But I also didn't disclose the entire list to you. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. So it's like select that one, key That one is a little easier for me. That doesn't... Yep. Yeah. And so it is zero knowledge proving of something um, with a little bit of knowledge. <laughs> so maybe not <laughs> But you don't... Zero. The, the zero knowledge is not knowing all of it. Um, and so... If you went, like, if Rachel, for instance, overheard this interaction, she would have to ask the exact same numbers to you, or, or you would have to, actually, sorry, <laughs> you would have to, to ask the exact same numbers to her for her to try to prove that. But you would pick it random again, and she would immediately be proven wrong for not having the, the truth. Mm, I like that one. I like when something is immediately proven wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Especially me. Yep. And so the, the real issue in a ZK snark system is that the nodes have to trust each other. Um, and if you have nodes that have to trust each other, then you kind of have this centralized nature. And so people are in the process of working on zero knowledge models where there is less trust required for the people that hold the nodes so that we can all have no knowledge better, less mm -hmm. of it. Mm. And I know like this is kind of one of those things where it's like obvious, like this, the phrase, you know, knowledge is power. But the thing with kind of blockchain and decentralized, like the decentralized world, the, the knowledge is ours. Like your personal data is yours and your information is yours. And so you have that power right now with the way that our system works, kind of like what you were saying earlier, Richard, you know, our information is constantly being used by third party entities or government. And we don't have any say over that. And um, looking at some of these different options, like what's in the article we reviewed, uh, it gives us new ways to have autonomy and like take control of our own personal data and how we want to, you know, impact the world and how we want to be seen. Yeah, and so the, the essence of this article, if we were to boil it all the way down into its, its core, they're talking about, you know, they, they have introduced this uh, soul-bound token, which, <laughs> you know, is like, hey, this is who you are. Um, of course, this isn't going to be the thing forever. Um, but 
it's fun to see people attempt uh, to move down paths that they also don't really fully understand. And basically what they're saying is like, hey, wouldn't it be better if we did this in a way that was actually private instead of um, extremely public like the blockchain is? And so they're, they're looking at different ways to enact privacy for NFTs or transactions that maybe wouldn't get immediately sanctioned. Um, and uh, it's just interesting to see this space develop. But what uh, it, it seems like there's contention on this, and it shows that like Vitalix, um, his suggestion could cost quite a bit of gas yeah. in order to actually use. And so... Um, the suggestion was to use a layer two ZK technology, um, which would be far cheaper than that um, and give you similar privacy. But, you know, again, we're seeing interesting things with this tornado sanction thing. And as we see this, we'll also see, um, you know, more and more interesting legal pathways that people are taking. And we'll see. I mean, is is open free software actually open and free or are we seeing centralized parties kind of destroy this mechanism and say, yeah, unless we just don't like it. Just like we saw with, I don't know, there's some history here as well. This happened more recently with a program called YouTube DL. Are any of you guys familiar with? Oh, um, that? is that the one where, uh, you could make copies of you YouTube download videos? From YouTube. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a library that a lot of people use to allow you to just download some YouTube videos. And of course, um, this is something that's also not quite as known is that YouTube videos are not encoded with the ads mm. because that wouldn't work if you wanted to play different ads on top of them. And so you can download the YouTube videos with no ads. Um, and obviously they don't like that kind of thing. Um, and so they, uh, this is an open source software that anyone can use and they were little whiny bitches, and we can decide if we want to keep that <laughs> or not. Um, and complained to someone like GitHub, and GitHub removed it and said, no, 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 you can't have this software on here. And then um, what GitHub or Microsoft or whomever decided to make that decision didn't realize is that, oh, wait, we actually employ engineers that have opinions. And there was a pretty big uproar from people, and they restored it. Ooh. And so... We see that in some ways where they actually do care about open um, and free software, but in other cases like this, it's just like, ah, you know, we, we heard this one thing or we saw this one thing and it's just up to us to decide what good software is. And I see a world in the future if we're to remain a free people to whatever degree it is and whatever country you're in, um, where we've got to take a stand on what freedom and openness is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right on. Thank you, Richard. Now, I do want to move on to our second article. It's not as interesting, um, but it does have to go slightly within the realm of utility. Um, and this one may be uh, a, not as interesting, but definitely funny. So this one is titled <laughs> Dogecoin Utility Expands with Teslas in Tunnels from the Boring Company. Uh, this is, again, another one that's on, uh, I believe this one's on Crypto Slate, uh, written by Samuel Wan. So... If you didn't know, uh, Elon Musk made an announcement that Dogecoin will be accepted in the boring company tunnels. Uh, and 24 hours since the announcement of that, Dogecoin is up 4%. That's right. Dogecoin is now a grand total of 7.5 cents. Uh, I bought mine for 50 cents a piece. So that's where I stand. On it. Oh, God. Yeah. I don't even know how, what my, I, I'm not going to look. It's fine. <laughs> so, Don't look. <laughs> I'm not going to. One of the, the notes that I made when I was going through this article is that, like, people throw around the word utility in this space, like, all the time. And So much. Yeah. And there are, uh, so my background is in writing copy uh, for crypto companies, specifically brand new companies getting their like white papers and websites before I ended up at uh, Pixel Chain. I did that freelance and I worked for a lot of different companies. And, you know, being paid to, to write, you know, they kind of try to take people's ideas and make them presentable. And I can't tell you how many times I had devs who were like, oh yeah, this has real, real utility. The utility is um, that it's, a reflection goes token, up. and then we will <laughs> donate it to a charity. 
And that's not actually what utility is. Utility is not just use, but it's like use for the user, in my opinion. So like, you know, if, if the people who make the token are the only ones who are able to use it, that doesn't count as utility to me. But now if you are a boring person, you can use it <laughs> on tunnels. Uh, a very scaled down version of transportation that consists of two 0 0.8 mile mm -hmm. tracks. It's exactly what I've always wanted. <laughs> but there, there is a more ambitious <laughs> utility plan in the future with the quote unquote Vegas loop mm -hmm. that will have users riding Teslas to get to key landmarks around the city. <laughs> so exciting. But that's less boring because there's no tunnels. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, right. Much less boring. Right. So in Vegas in the future, in Teslas, you will be able to bring your dog. I think that's what the, the final well, uh, conclusion of the article One of the was. things I that wonder. the article said was that they, they think that Dogecoin has utility because the quote was that um, Dogecoin is money. But that also is kind of <laughs> like, that's literally what it says. It's like, this is utility because it's money. And it's like, ah, ah. that's not. <laughs> well. well, anything can be money. I mean, that would mean any token is utility. Well, I guess. so I did find out that the Dogecoin founder uh, sold off his entire cryptocurrency holdings in 2015 so he could afford a Honda Civic. Oh, I did hear about that too. This guy. Oh, wow. I did not. So it's kind of like a hey. full circle utility now that he, if he buys Doge again at 50 cents and sell and has it at 7.5 cents, then he can now ride in Teslas with it. Yeah. Here's the thing though. A Honda Civic is actually a great investment because they last forever and you're always going to have your reliable Honda Civic. So we do not this endorse. This is not car buying advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is not car buying advice. <laughs> we do not endorse uh, Honda Civics or Teslas. I don't personally own a Honda Civic, but I've heard that every millionaire or like, what is it? The most millionaires in the U.S. drive a Honda Civic. Wow. Uh, yeah, cha ching we baby about um yeah stats that, i let, drive let's, i let's drive a Honda all the Civic. other stats that are not confirmed or denied on right the hello everyone pixel chats does not endorse or condone the usage of car slander or yes. statistics um, i will say my favorite quote from this article is when it says the tesla ceo reaffirmed his support for doi do <laughs> doge <laughs> for doge coin doge coin doge for Doge because Dodge. it, quote unquote, it has the memes and dogs and it seems like it has a sense of humor, end quote. End quote. <laughs> that is from Elon Musk on why he supports Dogecoin mm -hmm. because it has memes and dogs. So We're also talking about the same guy that decided one day that he would take Bitcoin and then the second day that he wouldn't take Bitcoin and that they were going to buy all their holdings and never sell it and take Bitcoin and never sell it and then... That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, flip floppy around. Yeah, he uh, manipulates the market, whether that is intentional, which it seems like it must be, um, or unintentional. Like, I mean, he just like is a chaos agent. He is. He is a chaotic <laughs> evil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't Rachel. know. I, I can't. I can't. Oh, sorry. He's like, I can't figure the guy out. He's boring. Or has been. Uh, uh. He's he's so he's so interesting in a boring way. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> Rachel and I are a part of a few crypto watcher groups, mm -hmm. and in those crypto watcher groups, we have um, exclusively a channel um, that has I think it's an API feed from Twitter, and it's only Elon Musk. And we get an announcement whenever he says anything with crypto, um, because it is like a huge flag whether green or red in crypto whenever this guy says anything about it yep. and you have to just be ready yep and it's terrifying yeah. it's yeah. yeah it reminds me of the old like 2016 <laughs> 17 with um the uh mccaffey guy. Mm -hmm. but oh, you know i mean at least i mean we can we can rag on him or what's going on all we want or you know kind of laugh at him choosing doge just because but at least people are taking no notice of the technology even if they don't really like understand it to the end yeah of the that's right. definitely yeah. true it's it's an accessibility piece um i know that like my my jump into crypto 
uh, started with Sheeb. And I did that just literally because it was a cute picture. And I was like, hmm, I'd like to buy that. But it was so <laughs> impossible. <laughs> you know, I didn't know anyone who had, who had worked in crypto before. I'd never, I barely knew what crypto was. And it took me probably like four hours to figure out how to buy it. But that just was like, it just felt like it was getting increasingly personal <laughs> for me. Like, I have to figure this out. <laughs> I cannot leave this without figuring it out. And that's literally the old, like the reason I got into crypto was because I'm stubborn and it was impossible. And it was yeah, it was a challenge. And then once I got here, though, it was like, man, that was so, so difficult. Like, I, I want to make this a more accessible space. Like, I want things to be easier for other people so that I don't have to onboard them like I did with all my family. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to pull back to, um, you know, something we talked about before with uh, Tornado, Tornado Cash. Um, I ran across another tweet, since we're also talking about Vitalik, where he is talking about a... Sorry, I'm trying to like copy and paste on my phone and Twitter is being <laughs> kind of dumb. Um, but I'll, I'll read it. Essentially, you know, someone's talking about the use cases of something like privacy on chain. And a lot of people I hear talking about privacy is like, oh, I've got nothing to hide. Well, okay, you can say that, but that's just not true. Um, there's a reason why your door, your bathroom has a door on it, right? Um, <laughs> people have privacy in their lives. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a thing. So one of the many valid use cases of privacy protocols is donating to a cause that might you get you in trouble if done publicly. Mm. Like, we have a right to conserve who we a, either vote for or what charities we support and that kind of thing. And making it to where all monetary transactions are strictly watched and governed, you know, I think is just a, a very poor... A uh, way to deliver privacy to the people. Yeah. And Vitalik himself, um, you know, has said that he has outed himself as someone who has used Tornado Cash to donate to this exact cause. Mm. Uh, um, and I don't know what he means by this exact cause, but I think that what he means is that, like, this is the reason why he has used a privacy protocol um, was to donate to something. Oh, I guess the Ukraine this exact cause this. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Like, what if I want to support that, but I don't want maybe maybe my government, maybe I'm in mm -hmm. Germany, you know, like, what are they going to what are they going to do to me um, if if that happens? And no one no one wants that. So I think privacy is a, a real big fundamental issue that is going to come up in the current generation. Well, I think that like kind of building up of that, uh, I don't think that we even really understand what privacy means anymore. <laughs> you know? I agree. That's what I was saying before. Like, um, oh, I've got nothing to hide. Well, like I said, you know, that's just not true. What if I don't want someone to know that I bought something? Mm -hmm. um, that's that's my own decision. You know, like I I went and I ordered it. It and has did this, this thing. I don't want everyone. In, you know, like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't want my mom to know I got her flowers tomorrow for her birthday. Like, she shouldn't oh, be able to. That was such my a wholesome. Holy. <laughs> You got flowers, you know, like I, I no, have a right to wholesome. privacy. It was very wholesome. <laughs> that was such a wholesome that. example. I totally <laughs> thought it was going to be something else. <laughs> <laughs> is it actually your mom's birthday tomorrow? It is. Oh, actually. nice. Oh my Did gosh. Wish her happy birthday. Did you get her flowers? I might have. <laughs> oh, that's why it was wholesome. It was at the top of mine. Discreet packaging. Yeah. Let's use real life here, guys. Yeah, yeah right. The, the point is, is that when I, when I, when I hear drugs, people, yeah, yeah exactly. When, when Carla buys all the drugs, she just doesn't <laughs> yes. want people to know who she is or the dealer is. It's pretty exactly. straightforward. Yeah, all my um, drugs. Yeah, and the safe shoot-up zone needs to have a privacy screen because, I you know, it's a, it's a private, agree. intimate thing that you're doing. Actually, For all the butter hands. Because I don't want people to think I actually shoot up drugs. Le <laughs> like they actually in? thought we don't have to delete that it. you, uh, they, like, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure if they hear this and asking you <laughs> okay. to delete it, not thinking that you're going to shoot up drugs is probably not. Okay. We, are, we are relatable humans. Someone here has a sense of humor, hopefully. Yes. And um, we're not judging you if you do shoot up drugs. 
No, no, no. Or if you use a privacy screen or not in a safe shoot up zone, that's your own thing. Right. Yeah. It's really hard to um, say with Carla though. Cause I mean, she did have us convinced that she thought that there were deers on dollar bills last time. So <laughs> really... that never made it to the podcast, oh. but uh, because uh, the original dollar was printed with deer instead of people. They made money out of deer. Bucks. What? They made money out of deer, deer instead of people dollars? and now it's people. No, no. It's instead of people, like instead of George Washington, it was deer virgins. And that's why they call them bucks. Like deer Washington? That's pretty cool. I really thought, yeah, it didn't, Zach cut it. But Richard, you were like, where do bucks come from? Or where does the dollar come from? Where does the term buck come from, Carla? Well, like, actually, you for it. actually, like, deer. Oh, you want a smart ass? You asked it in a smart ass way. You want a smart ass reply. So I gave you one. Carla was, uh, you Carla was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Carla was like, <laughs> actually, wasn't it because they printed deer on dollars? <laughs> and then. Yeah. Or you guys actually then, think I would believe that's, that? <laughs> that's where dough came from. <laughs> that's obvious. Yeah, it's dough. And then. Uh, <laughs> you were all, and you were all playing well, into it. Too. That was so, so like, funny. I just we were all just like nodding, you know, kind of like when somebody like says a crazy thing and you're just like oh yeah don't don't say anything to it's kind of like deer in headlights and we're all yeah. nodding yep zach uh, oh everything relates to deer when it comes <laughs> it to all that. comes back around. i just like, thought i was like i mean I was like oh this we're is talking we about the same sarcasm no yeah we're, t- we're talking about vitalik wanting to be john deer <laughs> or john doe right you right vitamix butter in. <laughs> vitamix butter in. <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'd say that pretty much uh, on that note, this has been very great, uh, but we should probably wrap it up. Of, See? of course. Um, thank you, Zach, for always fact checking Carla and checking whether or not things should stay in. Um, I wanted to give a big shout out and thank you to all five of our listeners currently, um, specifically Tobias, your inspiration. And uh, I love the little uh, sweet things you say to me uh, after every podcast. in any case thank you for everyone listening at home i'm going to pass over to carla to say some goodbyes and i love yous um i will say my goodbyes and i love yous but for our listeners those five of you out there if you have any articles you want us to talk about next time please send it our way um we'd love to talk about any topic that you guys suggest so we're always i was gonna say any any topic there might be some limits on the topics (laughs) We will no, no, no. bet we'll, it for we'll at least relevancy. Talk about the article existing, <laughs> but uh, yeah. we may say after that, just like uh, no, 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 this exists. Or it could be a challenge of like, uh, can we actually make this article relevant mm-hmm. to the crypto space in Web three? Yeah, can we actually link this in any way, shape, or form, or will we get in trouble by something? Yeah. By HR. Right. By HR. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the mating habits of the Spanish bat. <laughs> nice. Oh, Carla, boy. Take it away. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. And with that, um, I will bid everyone a great evening. Thank you, Richard and Rachel, again. And this has been Pixel, Pixel Chats. Chats.